Hello, my name is Professor John Kelly and this is week three of Automotive Technology 4530 Hybrid and Electric Vehicle Systems. This week's episode we will be concentrating on low voltage batteries and low voltage systems on hybrid and electric vehicles as well as the high voltage batteries and systems on these vehicles. Now one thing before we proceed with today's topic Last week we talked about personal protective equipment and personal uh, safety and shop safety. Uh, I had several uh, people comment on the video that I had forgotten two essential uh, safety uh, requirements uh, that I often overlook. Uh, one is you should not be wearing rings when you're working on high voltage uh, systems or even low voltage systems and wristwatches or any type of uh, jewelry, necklace, anything that can be uh, conductive or caught up in some sort of uh, parts on the, on the vehicle. So I neglected and am guilty of breaking that rule uh, way too many times. Of, uh, I, didn't, I neglected to mention those two things. So thank you for the, the input. All right, well, let's move into today's topic, uh, and we'll start out with low voltage systems on uh, vehicles. So I've got behind me here a 2010 Toyota Prius. I mentioned in the first week's video uh, for this class that the original Toyota Prius is, is where I believe all of today's hybrids and electric vehicles have um, sprung from as far as components and so on components in operation, and we will look into those uh, one week at a time, one system at a time, and try to put all of those together. So we're starting with the batteries. So just like on the original Prius, the, the newer Priuses, well this is not that new, 2010, but even the brand new Prius, the 2017 we've got out in the shop, uh, all hybrids that I am aware of and electric vehicles all still have a 12 volt system that the lights, the radio, all the interior and exterior electronics run on. The high voltage system that we will look at the batteries today on high voltage systems, but that is only used as part of the propulsion system, air conditioning system, and steering on some vehicles, uh, electronic steering assist systems. And so let's begin with the, the 12 volt system. So every hybrid and electric vehicle will have a 12 volt battery somewhere uh, on the vehicle. Uh, that 12 volt battery uh, could be a little tiny battery like in this Prius or it could be a great big one like in a, a Tesla Model S. Uh, but they still have a 12 volt battery. And Another thing to keep in mind is that these vehicles do not have an alternator. So the traditional charging system that you may have learned about over the years does not exist on these vehicles. It uses a totally different type of charging system called a DC to DC converter or a buck converter or, or a step down converter. There are many different names uh, for it, but basically we'll take whatever high voltage level you have for your high voltage battery and step it down to whatever the charging system voltage may be on that vehicle. Now you can have a charging system without an, without an alternator. It's just the DC to DC converter. So let's look at some batteries that come in hybrid uh, and electric vehicles. And we'll start with uh, so the Toyota Prius 12-volt uh, battery. Okay, right here on the workbench, I have a 2010 Toyota Prius 12-volt battery. And this battery is just a little tiny uh, battery. It uh, is a special type of battery, though. It's not just your regular lead-acid battery. This is an AGM, absorbent glass mat battery and it's made for being deep cycled which means run down fairly low and charge back up uh, several or many times without destroying itself like a traditional uh, lead acid battery would would do over time so this 
battery is a very expensive battery. It's around $300 uh, for the Toyota Prius. And you do not charge this battery with a traditional charger that you might hook to a regular uh, automobile with a 12 volt system. Uh, it tells us right on top of this uh, battery, it says when you charge the battery, charging current should not be higher than 4.2 amps and the charging time should be within 10 hours. 10 hours. So 4.2 amps maximum for no more than 10 hours. So you need a special AGM charger battery charger for these. It, I have a snap-on uh, battery charger that puts out 4 amps uh, on an AGM uh, setting and I'll show you how to hook that to the car and a little bit about about this little charger. But it, it does a good job. But if you hook a regular high amperage charger to these batteries uh, you can destroy them uh, prematurely. Uh, and you need to be careful uh, because a lot of battery chargers, the 12 volt battery chargers, when you put them on the high setting, they will put out more than 14 to 15 volts that the charging system would normally put out uh, on the car. And if you happen to have the system powered on and you go higher than the normal system voltage, you could cause damage to the rest of the vehicle electrical system. So never ever use a... a a non-AGM battery charger on an AGM battery. And you need to look. You can't just assume that it's that it's not an AGM battery. And you can't assume that somebody put an AGM battery back in the vehicle when it required one. Because they're so expensive, um, it's very possible that someone decided, well, all batteries are the same except the price. I'll just go down to the local auto parts store and get a battery that'll fit and put it in there and when that when somebody does that depending on the vehicle it could cause uh, charging system problems because batteries have different internal resistances and if the DC to DC converter the part that charges this battery is made for an AGM battery and its internal resistance and somebody puts a lower internal resistance battery in or a higher internal resistance battery it could affect the charging system operation uh, it could overwork it, it could underwork it, uh, the battery could be going dead uh, quite often. So it's important to make sure that you've got the correct battery in the vehicle to operate properly. Um, in our 2002 Prius that I showed you in the first episode, uh, it came in with the wrong battery in it. And it had a trouble code for a DC to DC, to DC converter uh, problem. And... So we took that, uh, the incorrect battery out and put the correct one in. Um, it, the car still has a transmission problem uh, that we need to, to fix. But um, when you are diagnosing problems, you have to go through step by step a process of elimination. And when you see something that's wrong, like the, the wrong battery uh, and the wrong battery type, you need to eliminate that as a possibility uh, as you move on. Okay, so this is a, a Prius battery here. Now right here, and this one's a lot heavier, so I, I'm not going to lift it, but this is a battery out of a Toyota Camry hybrid. And one thing uh, to notice here is that it has a temperature sensor built into it. So this little wire harness here, there's an electrical connector that plugs in and the vehicle harness and the charging system uh, controller are looking for this temperature sensor. So if you unplug that temperature sensor uh, and put in just some non-factory uh, battery in that particular vehicle, uh, it could cause trouble codes, it could cause charging system problems because the temperature sensor is there to make sure that we don't overheat the battery while it is uh, charging and it's to make sure that we put enough charge in there uh, to keep it charged without overheating. Uh, I, I know I just said the same thing two different ways, but um, without that temperature sensor, uh, I believe the system goes into a default mode where it will try to prevent overheating of the battery by reducing 
the charging and besides setting a diagnostic trouble code. So this is also an absorbent glass mat battery and right on the top of it, uh, let's see, does it tell us? An, yes, it does. This one says when you charge the battery, charging current should never be higher than 5 amps. So it was 4.2 amps on the Prius battery, 5 amps on this one, and a charging time no longer than 12 hours, and it was 10 hours on the, on the Prius battery. So batteries are not batteries. Uh, they're not all the same. You've got to make sure on these hybrid and electric vehicles that you put the exact battery that's called for. If, if you want that vehicle to work like it was when it was brand new, it needs to have the same parts in it as it did when it was brand new. So that's the 12 volt, well we call it 12 volt, it's the 12.6 volt uh, battery just like any, uh, voltage wise, just, uh, just like any other automotive battery. All right, let's take a look at where these are um, on, on the vehicle. And how do you access them if they go dead? Because occasionally you'll have one go dead. And normally they're not in an easy to get uh, location. Uh, one more thing to add to last week's discussion on personal protective equipment. Uh, several years ago, I hung the, this high voltage glove up and it was kind of a dark red uh, high voltage glove uh, it's a really old one. It's tested September of 2007, so it's 10 years old. But it was in perfect shape. I kept it in the in its storage box. But I wanted you to see, just from sitting out in the open room, how much it, it has deteriorated just from the ozone in the air. Uh, there's no sunlight in here, so it is just falling apart. Uh, as you can see. And this white powdery uh, substance that you see on the outside of the glove is what they start to do as they break down and then they just get worse and worse and worse. Uh, you can see the leather glove is in good shape, the cotton inner liner is in good shape, but the um, high voltage glove is not. And that's one of the reasons that they need to be recertified uh, or replaced uh, quite often. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you before we go to the vehicle, and that is the routing of the low voltage wiring from the battery that is in the trunk on a lot of hybrid and uh, electric vehicles. Some of them it's up front, like the Tesla Model S and Toyota Highlander and so on. Uh, almost all of the um, other hybrids I'm aware of, the Chevy uh, Volt, Toyota Prius, the Ford um, Fusion, and so on. The the battery is in the in the back. Well, maybe I'm wrong on the Ford. I need to I need to go look at my photographs from car shows that I've gone to. I'm pretty sure I saw it in the back, but could be wrong on that one. All right, so um, we've got the low voltage battery, the 12 volt battery right here and if you look at this board that I have uh, set up here on the wall I described on the first day of class our first video that this is pretty much the entire electrical system of a second generation Toyota Prius 2004 through 2009 so we've got the high voltage battery right here 201.6 volts we've got the low voltage battery they are both in the trunk and then we've got this orange cable that goes from the high voltage battery up and all the way up underneath the hood to the inverter converter assembly. But I wanted you to see, if we look real co close here, there are actually three cables there. We've got the two orange cables that are the plus and the minus, the positive and negative cables for the high voltage battery. But then we've got this black cable right here that also goes to the front up to the underhood fuse block. And this is what connects to the positive post um, of the high voltage or of the low voltage battery in the back of most uh, vehicles. Now some of these have a special temperature sensor right on the positive battery post uh, that all of 
this this heavy cable plugs into and then there's smaller wires for the sensor but that black cable if we follow that goes all the way up front and then on my board here it's it's come down but you can see right there there's a label that says two underhood fuse block and this little eyelet right there is what hooks to the underhood fuse block so let's let's look at the underhood uh, fuse block next okay so if we come in underneath the hood and look at the underhood fuse block right here if we take this cover off the big heavy black cable that came from the back of the car from the 12 volt battery running all the way to the front on the second generation Prius um, the equivalent to that here on the third generation Prius is this big heavy white wire right here that goes into that connection there and that is right from the 12 volt battery in the in the trunk area so let's go take a look at where that battery is in the trunk all right to open the trunk on most Toyotas uh, it's an electronic uh, release and there's a button you have to push underneath here to open the trunk which means if you have a dead battery there is no mechanical option there's no key slot for you to open uh, the trunk now if you have a dead battery and you want to get back here underneath this rear corner storage compartment on the passenger side you're going to have to get inside the car uh, to do that but uh, you don't have to because up underneath the hood is actually a jump start terminal so right here there's a positive uh, symbol if we just slide that open you've got a little metal blade right there that's the positive connection to the 12 volt battery and if you come in with a positive battery cable with the, the clamp with the cable on it connected right there and then uh, there's a ground with a, a stud for the strut right there with the stud and the nut that's where I always go um, for uh, jump starting but you could go over on the engine somewhere and find a good ground uh, also but right there is where you could jump start the the vehicle and actually it's not jump starting you're, you're just putting power to it so that you can hit the power button to turn on the vehicle uh, and let the vehicle's own charging system uh, charge it up or you could put a battery charger uh, right there but let's go look at where that battery is in the trunk so if you can get the, the rear hatch open which if you <laughs> if you have a dead battery you're going to have to open the, the the driver's door just to pop the trunk open anyway but here on the on the driver's door handle is a key slot the key fob itself comes with a key hidden in the side of it so you push this little button on the side and pull out on the little key and then you can use that key right here to come in and lock or unlock the the doors with a mechanical lock but that's the only place on the entire vehicle where it has a key mechanical key lock so if you get in and pop the hood open you can use the jump start terminal um, if for some reason you need to get into the trunk area with a dead battery um, when you come to the back here it may have a carpeted mat in the trunk so let's get that 
out of the way. And then it has a hard mat that has locks on it. So if we unlock the mat and lift up on this little handle here, there's a storage compartment underneath here and we can lift the cover off of the storage compartment. And when you get the cover off of that storage compartment, as you can see here, great big storage compartment, then there's a hole in the storage compartment right here where you can reach in. There's a slot where if you use a like a flathead screwdriver where you can open the latch of the, the trunk here and pop the, pop the latch open. Uh, but it's kind of hard to get, too hard to see. You'd have to fold down uh, at least one seat uh, to get in here to, to do that. Now we still don't have access to the 12 volt battery. So now let's lift out the storage compartment. Get it out of the way. And we are almost to the battery. <laughs> so the 12 volt battery is under this cover here that you can't get off unless you get that storage compartment out of the way. And here's the 12 volt battery. So this is a replacement for that, for the original battery. This is a Toyota True Start brand battery, but it's the official replacement AGM battery for this vehicle. We've got the positive cable right here and that white wire that we saw going uh, to the front fuse compartment, underhood fuse compartment comes from right here from our 12 volt uh, battery terminal. Uh, the negative terminal right here just has this little short cable that comes over and bolts to the back of the trunk sheet metal right there. So a tiny, tiny short um, negative cable. All right. Um, and a good strong hold down bracket to keep it from uh, moving around while, while driving. Now let's go up front and I'll show you how to hook a battery charger to the jump start terminal. So the, the battery charger I've been using uh, on these vehicles is this little snap-on uh, trickle charger. Uh, let's see if I can see a part number on it. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, model number EEBM500. EEBM500. And you'll notice it has a standard battery charging light, an absorbent glass mat light, and a gel cell battery light in both 6 and uh, 12 volt. So we are going to connect up the charger and you, you've got to pay attention to the cable ends of jump start cables or battery chargers. Now see on this positive cable here where the wire comes in to the left hand side of the clamp. It's that left hand side of the clamp here, this side, that we want to connect to that blade, the jump start blade underneath the, underneath the hood here. So I'm going to hook that up right now. I'm going to come in, put it right there. On the other side of this blade down here is plastic. Uh, so you've got to make sure the side of the jump start cable with the wire is on the side that has the blade there. Um, now these particular alligator clips 
uh, might have a electric might have an electrical connection between the two sides through the the pivot uh, rivet there but you can't always guarantee that that's a good connection so just make sure you've got the cable side there now i'm going to put that negative cable on that stud up underneath there and now we are good to plug in the charger uh, if we wanted to and select the AGM setting and and hit start to get it charging but for the moment we are not ready to do that because now I want to show you a, a charging system check on this vehicle so let me take off the the charger for a moment when these vehicles sit uh, in the classroom for a long time they they of course have a parasitic drain that that runs runs the battery down all right i'm going to get my fluke 87 multimeter that i showed you in the personal protective equipment video and we are going to use that to check the charging system uh, voltage on this car so just a quick check if we put our positive lead on the blade and our negative lead somewhere where we should have a good ground I'm gonna try this bracket right here my alligator clips kind of small There we go. Okay, so let's get the multimeter. All right, so here's our multimeter. We're going to switch it to DC volts. And as you can see right now, the battery voltage is 12.35 volts. So the next thing I'm going to do is start the vehicle, except it's not really except the term to use on these hybrid and electric vehicles is is not really to start it it's it's to power it on but old habits are hard to break uh, we are going to hit the power button just like turning on a computer um, the engine may or may not start i suspect it will on this one because it's been a while uh, since it has started and probably needs to charge the system okay I have looked up the official on vehicle inspection procedure for checking the auxiliary battery voltage uh, on this Prius so Toyota calls the 12 volt battery the auxiliary battery so it tells us if the battery is fully depleted or the ready light does not light up on the dash Recharge the battery, check the battery again before the vehicle is returned to the customer. So step A, check the battery for damage or deformation. If severe damage or deformation or leakage is found, replace the battery. Number or letter B, check the voltage. Turn the power switch off, which we have, and turn on the headlights for 20 to 30 seconds. This will remove the surface charge from the battery and then measure the battery voltage in accordance with the the table below and it says we should be at 12.5 volts at 68 degrees uh, Fahrenheit 20 degrees Celsius if the battery voltage is not as specified replace the battery so let's do that next okay I'm going to turn on the headlights for 15 to 20 seconds Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. There's about twenty seconds. So now let's shut them off. We are supposed to have a 
static voltage here of 12.5 volts or higher. We are at 12.30 and just slowly climbing. It says 12.5 volts or higher. If the voltage is not as specified, char charge the battery, not, <laughs> not replace it. So it doesn't surprise me that the charge level is a little bit low here. All right, now the next thing uh, is to check the battery terminal, make sure the terminals are not loose or corroded. Uh, check the fuses, make sure each battery charging, make sure the resistance of each fuse for the battery charging system is below one ohm. And then check the auxiliary battery ventilation hose, make sure it is not kinked. So that's the battery voltage inspection. So that reveals that we're just a little bit low here. So now let's see if we can find something about um, checking the charging system output. All right, on Toyotas, uh, the charging system check uh, doesn't, doesn't exist. There's not a, a regular charging system check like you would expect to see that gives you whatever voltage there should be. Instead, there are just trouble codes that trigger whenever the voltage is too low. Uh, there's a P0560 for system voltage low that has you check the battery condition and check for other codes that may exist. But on other hybrids that I've seen, like uh, Hondas and, and General Motors, um, they actually give you a voltage that corresponds pretty closely with what a regular automobile charging system would have that's not a hybrid, and that is somewhere in the 14 to 15 volt range. So right now our battery voltage is sitting at 12.36 volts. I'm going to power on the system. Okay, now with the key fob in the car, I'll hit the brake pedal and the power button. And the system is powered up. So now our voltage is 14.4, 14 14.5, 14 the internal combustion engine is turned on, but that has nothing to do with the 12 volt charging system. Uh, the internal combustion engine comes on when the, when the high voltage battery, the 201.6 volt battery voltage is low and it will run the engine until uh, that voltage reaches a predetermined uh, charge level and then um, then it'll shut off so the engine will cycle on and off to keep the high voltage battery charged now the 12 volt system that's running at 14 and a half volts right now it is fed off of that high voltage battery. So if the high voltage battery voltage gets low, then the low voltage system may not work properly either, which is a real common problem on Honda, uh, the old Honda IMA systems. When the batteries start to go bad, then the 12 volt batteries keep going dead, not because they're bad, but because the uh, IMA system doesn't have enough power to run the vehicle and run the DC to DC converter at the same time and keep the battery charged and there is no external external alternator on those engines and so you know, the battery goes just goes dead and uh, that's a I get a lot of people asking me uh, about that vehicle so one more time high voltage battery is charged by the engine the engine just shut off but the power to the vehicle is still on the low voltage battery is charged by a component called the DC to DC converter that receives its power from the high voltage battery. It takes the high voltage, steps it down through transformer action down to the 14 uh, and a half volts there. And now the engine is off. The voltage will still be at the 14.5, 14.53 that it is. Um, because as I said, the engine has nothing to do with the output voltage of the 12 volt system uh, charging system. So you can look at any uh, hybrid or electric vehicle. As soon as you power up that vehicle, it that vehicle's DC to DC converter will be 
charging the 12 volt system on the or the 12 volt battery on that on that vehicle and once again that 12 volt battery is what the headlights the windshield wipers the radio the electric seats everything else on the vehicle runs on that 12 volt system so you still have to have a good auxiliary battery as as toyota calls it the 12 volt battery um, and a good good charging system but you do not need to wear personal protective equipment when working on the the high vol or the low voltage system on this vehicle unless you are getting into the dc to dc converter uh, diagnostics or replacement because it connects to both the high voltage uh, battery system that can be as high as 500 to 650 volts depending on the model year uh, with the uh, engine running and as low as maybe 201 volts on uh, Toyotas as low as 144 volts on uh, some Hondas um, and so if you're replacing a DC to DC converter then yes uh, the personal protective the high voltage gloves personal protective equipment and high voltage gloves are, are necessary but just for regular 12 volt automotive diagnostics um, it's just the same as any other vehicle except it does not have an alternator um, now in the transaxle of hybrid vehicles there is an electric motor that is spun by the internal combustion engine that charges the high voltage battery and so in a way you could call that the generator or the alternator but once again that's only for the high voltage battery if i left the headlights on on this car behind me i would run the low voltage battery dead as long as the power was off the high voltage battery could be perfectly charged and ready to go but the 12 volt battery is needed to start the car because the 12 volt system the computers that control the the high voltage batteries and the hybrid system they all run on 12 volts so if you have a bad or a low voltage 12 volt system then the hybrid system is not going to work uh, correctly okay so that is the 12 volt system which power on just like with the engine running on a a regular uh, vehicle the system voltage is somewhere between 14 and 15 volts and just put a multimeter on it if if when the vehicle is powered on you're not getting uh, any more than just regular battery voltage chances are there's something wrong a blown fuse a poor connection a bad D dc to dc converter uh, whatever it may be uh, that requires diagnostics and all manufacturers have some sort of a diagnostic starting point in their service information where you go and you connect a scan tool and you pull trouble codes and you look at what's been happening uh, on that vehicle uh, don't just assume that there's a, a bad part somewhere all right now we're ready to look at the high voltage uh, battery systems on these vehicles